So, ladies and gentlemen, the most requested misconception video is finally here. It's on the Dustana. So many messages I get. Oh, what about Dustana? Some good things. <laughs> so, you have to understand what is the meaning of the word do. You all know what's the meaning of the word sthan. Sthan means place, literally, in English. Okay. So, what is the meaning of the word do sthana? Do sthana means a place which is not very comfortable, which means there are some challenges which you face when you are sitting in that house. Okay. But it doesn't say it's a bad house. Okay. Now, of course, of whatever bad or negativity is there is from these three houses in Jyotish, 6, 8, 12. All right? But then why am I saying they are not bad houses? But then from where does the difficulty come? Where, where does all these bad things come actually? So you have to understand the bad things will only come when you fail to cross those challenges. So when you have difficulties in life, there are two things you can do. You can either solve them. Now externally, there are so many things which you have no control. But I am talking of the inner struggles there. Like for example, uh, the sixth house. Sixth house is the prime house of uh, weakness. Sixth house is the house of exploitation. Anybody can exploit you with a planet in the sixth house. Your sixth, not his or her sixth. <laughs> okay. Uh, sixth house. So primarily we have, you know, uh, the Sattva, Sattva Guni planets. Jupiter, Sun and Moon. They are Sattva Guni primarily. They do not give anarthas. They remove the anarthas. They help you to come out of them. Okay. But the other planets, the Rajasic planets like Mercury, Venus, and then we have uh, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu. Okay. We have Mars also. Saturn, Rahu, Ketu, and Mars and Mercury, Venus. These six, they give these six anarthas. Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsarya. Right. So lust, anger, greed, Envy, pride, delusion. These six anarthas are from these six planets. All right. So, for example, Kama comes from Venus. All right. So, now this is not a planet in house video. If you have Venus in sixth, you are uh, overly sexual. This video is not about that. All right. Everybody has some links of these six planets with the sixth house. Okay. But uh, we have to identify what that is. And then what's the eighth house? Eighth house is the house of depression. Eighth house is that what you do when you are alone. Should I repeat? What do you do when you are alone? <laughs> eighth house is that which you think when you are alone. Okay. And twelfth house is privacy. What do you want to do in private? It's the same thing, eight, eight and twelve, but eighth house is more of the subconscious mind thing and twelfth house is what do you want to do, All right? Privacy. Private life. <laughs> okay, so now the, uh, the the houses which take you out of these uh, anarthas, they are primarily the fifth and the ninth. They are the only two houses with the help of whom you can cross over your weaknesses. Okay. Fifth house is the disciple. So by your own efforts, by your hard work. And the ninth house, which is the blessings of the guru and the gods so without the blessings of your guru and god it is impossible to get rid of weaknesses to cross over them right you can pull the fifth house how much ever you want you can do whatever it takes from your side but at the end that has to come from the top right and when you are sincere then the guru prays on your behalf to god that please remove these weaknesses okay and how has the weaknesses come? Who has, who has put weaknesses? So scriptures give the example. So like when we are facing the sun, then what happens? We see light. All right. That is uh, the ninth house. Okay. Which is enlightenment. When we see the light means when, you are, when we are in tune with our spiritual nature. When we read the scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, or the Bible, or the Quran, or the Ramayana, the Mahabharata. When we are in touch with divinity then we see all light and there is no darkness absolutely okay but then you turn around what happens you have you have you seen when you uh, show your back to the sun what happens 
immediately there is shadow. You see your shadow, right? Shadow is there. Why do you get shadow? Because you have turned your face away from God. That is the eighth house, right? And therefore, the, the source of all weakness is facing away from God. That is the root cause. Because when we, uh, when we show our back to God, we do not follow the scriptural regulations and injunctions and practices which are recommended. And we do things which are prohibited. Then we invite disaster into our life. Right? We invite darkness. We invite depression, unhappiness. And eighth house is also the house of suicide. Okay? Suicide is the depression turning to a very aggressive form, basically. So what is the? Uh, these are the dustanas, all right, primarily. So what is what is the first misconception about dustana? The first misconception is, as I said, is that they are bad houses. They are not bad houses. Uh, they are difficult houses. So, will they be bad or difficult? That will depend on the horoscope. That will depend on the strength of the Lagnesh, the fifth and the ninth, and the lords of these houses. So, fifth lord, ninth lord. Okay. And it depends on the ascendant rule. Which planets are there in the ascendant? So, <clears throat> if the difficulty of the sixth, eighth, and twelfth is more than the power of these trines, the first, fifth, and ninth then it means that um, you have not sufficiently mastered these anarthas and weaknesses because of which you will fall down. Your fall down is certain, 100%. Okay? Fall down doesn't mean you will die or your reputation will be ruined, but your anarthas will overcome you. Okay? So that is 100% certain. If, if, the, if the strength of these three houses are not very good, and by default, the planets which remove anarthas, which is which are Jupiter, Sun, and Moon, if these three are also weak, then it is 100% guarantee. But if these three are strong in the chart, and the first, fifth, and the ninth lords, if they are also strong, it doesn't matter how bad your planets are in Dustanas. Okay, but you will be able to cross over them. You will cross over them, and you will succeed, and you will be triumphant. All right, so. Before you say planets in Dustanas are bad, look at the other houses. <laughs> Why? Because fifth is next from the sixth, and you know, ninth is also the next. Next, I mean, fifth is the twelfth, of course, and ninth is the second from the eighth. Okay, so and uh, also look at the ascendant, then look at Jupiter, Sun, Moon. So they will tell you the story, okay, what's going on actually. What is the next misconception? The next misconception is that uh, any planet which is in the Dusthana that is taken away from you. So I get this time and again. My Venus is in 6th, 8th or 12th. All right. So I will never get married. My spouse will die or my spouse will cheat. Or will I cheat on my spouse? Or will I die if I marry somebody? So somebody told me that uh, one astrologer told that if if a man has Venus in eighth house, the moment he gets married, he dies. <laughs> so then I said one twelfth of the population has Venus in eighth. So that's like you know uh, it's a huge number, 0.5 billion. So do you think all the 0.5 and within that if you divided into half half are men half are women let's say you so does it mean that 0.25 billion people you know they have just the day of their wedding them just they've left <laughs> so it doesn't mean that these are all some vague false misconceptions which uh, people have and some other people keep spreading all this okay now if a planet is in a dustana then the natural significations of that planet can go for a ride sometimes. If the house lords are also badly placed, only then that happens. Let me give you an example. So, suppose uh, you have Venus in the eighth. Then it doesn't mean that you will die after marriage, okay, or your spouse will die. But now, suppose your Lagnesh and your seventh lord and your second lord and your eleventh lord, because the second, seventh, and eleventh are the houses of marriage. If they are also badly placed and the Lagnesh is badly placed and the last and the most important condition 
So dashas of these plants are running. We forget dashas, right? We never see dashas. Dashas are not required, right? This is the attitude which we have. And if the dashas are running and the transits are bad, all right? Three conditions. Second, seventh, eleventh, and the lagnish and dashas are running of these plants and transits. Then you may get an accident after marriage or something like something like this can happen. But but imagine, I mean, that's a very rare possibility that all these four lords are badly placed and your Venus is also badly placed. And your Dasha, Dasha are also one of these and transits are also very bad. Okay? Very, very, very rarely it happens. So every, not everybody who has Venus in the eighth, they will die after marriage. All right, men especially. So do not think like this. But let me give you an example. But suppose you are Taurus Lagna. And now you have Venus in the eighth. Okay. Now this becomes a bit more difficult because here Venus is not only the character from edge, he's also the Lord of the seventh house. This can a bit add to the problem. Or if you're an Aries Lagna, then this can be even more dangerous because in Aries, Venus lords the second and the seventh. Okay. Or if you're a Cancer Lagna, then also Venus rules the eleventh. So then, then this can happen. But Still, you have to check the dashas and so many other things. So don't say that uh, Venus is there. So, uh, I mean, uh, you, your spouse will die or something. Or or maybe, you know, your Jupiter is there. So your children will die. No, nothing of that sort. Never, never, never. Right? And there is one golden principle of astrology. You know what is that? Which many people don't know. <laughs> golden One of the golden principles of astrology is one person, one horoscope. Should I repeat? One person, one horoscope. From my horoscope, I can say what is going on in my life. For God's sake, I cannot say what is going on in my father's life, in my mother's life, in my husband or wife or children's life. That is simply not possible. Because if that would be possible, we would take one horoscope for the entire family, right? But it doesn't work like that. Everybody has their own karma and they face it individually. Of course, now if I am having a yoga for divorce or separation, then that yoga may be reflected in the in my spouse's chart also. Okay. But then sometimes there could be separation due to work. And that person uh, may not be having that yoga, your spouse, because that person may be very much engrossed in his or her creativity or something like this. So then that's a very weird scenario that you are having separation due to work, but your spouse is not feeling that. Okay, it's very weird, but it happens sometimes. Okay or most of the times it can happen. Both are having a yoga for divorce and they are quarreling and fighting and then they get divorced, right? But sometimes the other way around also happens. You know, one has the other doesn't. So therefore, uh, don't think that your horoscope will tell you when your spouse will die. It never, never does, right? So especially things like longevity, which is related to the body of another individual. For God's sake, how can you predict your spouse's death from your horoscope. It simply doesn't work, right? Then the next next misconception is uh, that if my Lagnesh, Lagna Lord is in Dustha, 6, 8, 12, my whole life is ruined. <laughs> All the Dustana Lords are in my Lagna, my life is ruined. <laughs> this is like time and again I see, oh my Lagnesh is in Dustana, it's in 6, 8, 12, you know. It's terrible. It's bad. My life is ruined. That's why I am suffering in my job. I don't get married. I don't get into love relationships. Even if I get into, I cannot sustain. Ah, pathetic. Life doesn't seem worth living, right? So it is not like this. Okay? The, the overall horoscope matters. When you are talking of ascendant, please check the ascendant first, then the ascendant lord. Then you check Sun, then you check Jupiter and Mars. I have told this repeatedly. Whenever it comes to Ascendant, you must check Jupiter, Sun, Mars. All right, Because they are very intricately linked to the Ascendant. And also you must check the Atma Karaka. Now if all four are smashed, then you may suffer from depression and all this. But it doesn't happen generally that you know, everything is smashed. You know? So um, very rarely that happens. Okay, So... Just because you have your Lagna Lord in 6th, 8th, 12th, it doesn't mean your life is ruined. Or, you know, uh, 12th Lord is in Lagna, 8th Lord is in Lagna, 6th Lord is in Lagna, whole, whole life is wasted. It doesn't mean like that. 
you may have certain challenges you know even even lord ram had jupiter in lagna for karka he was karka lagna cancer ascendant so jupiter is the ninth lord but he's also the sixth lord so does it mean that lord ram's life was ruined definitely not <laughs> he faced humongous challenges right and that's why he's ram that he went through all these of course guru was exalted but what i'm trying to say here is that just because you have a planet uh, you know like for example eighth lord is in lagna so people say if eighth lord is in lagna then uh, depression is coming to me and if lagna lord is in eighth then i am going to depression i don't know <laughs> how can you differentiate between uh, you going to depression and depression coming to ultimately you are depressed right so externally it may dif be different but um, is the same thing ultimately all right but even then that is not true okay so therefore uh, be very careful when you say if lagnesh is in dustana you know my life is ruined okay the other thing they say uh, is if any planet is in dustana that planet will never rise in life no it's not like this so so for example if you have your um, fourth lord in the sixth uh, then it so then they say that oh the person will you know never study properly it's not like this it means that a person has to put reasonably more effort but then there are many other houses of education we have the fifth the ninth and the eleventh so they have a very strong say within that so these other houses will decide if if this person is able to study and grasp the subject matter or the person is just you know getting lost in all of these thoughts actually okay, of education so therefore uh, you have to understand that um, you should not blindly say if the fourth lord is in sixth or eighth or twelfth then the person doesn't uh, do good now another very big misconception is that if if you have prominent dustanas you will do very bad in homeland I don't know from where these ideas come. You know? So suppose you have like three, four planets in six, eight, twelve. Then I frequently get people asking me, "Sir, uh, my uh, horoscope is very bad. You know, uh, my dustanas are very prominent. So can I go abroad? I'm from India. Can I go to Germany or you know London or you know New Jersey or New York or Brisbane or you know, wherever, some other random place?" And then will my life change? And I'm like, okay, how do you come to that conclusion? That changing a place will change your karma. Do you think that uh, karma is like so foolish? <laughs> that you change a place and then your karma changes. Wow, how, how beautiful it was, right? But unfortunately, it doesn't work like this. And sometimes people have these ideas also. You know, if seventh lord is in a dustana, you will meet your spouse in a foreign land. I don't know every anything related to dustanas. They will equate it to foreign lands. I don't know from where these ideas come. So they say fourth lord is in the eighth or twelfth. You will gain property in foreign lands. Seventh lord in eighth. Your your spouse will be foreigner abroad spouse. When you go for education, you will meet your spouse. Uh, you know some masters or PhD abroad. None of these holds true. There's so many things, you know, dashas are there. If the dashas are indicating and other things are supporting, then that might happen. Okay. Or another thing they say, if uh, seventh lord is in uh, sixth, eighth or twelfth, you will have, you know, intercaste marriage or different, uh, uh, like, uh, for, for foreigner marriage. So if an Indian has that, they say the Indian will go and marry some, you know, American or Britisher or somebody like this. No, 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 none of that is true. There is no thumb rule given in the uh, books of Jyotish like this, all right? So now, of course, there are some yogas which say that you can do better if you go abroad, but it doesn't mean that you can bypass your karma like this, okay? It, it doesn't work, trust me, it doesn't. <laughs> so similarly, it's with marriage. If you are destined not to get married, you cannot just go abroad and you, know, you cannot just do find somebody there it's not possible it doesn't work like that if you are destined to get married then you will get married sitting in your home you don't have to even what to speak of country you don't have to go out of your town or what to speak of town you don't have to go out of your home you can get married sitting in your home all right <laughs> and if you are destined not to get married you can roam the entire universe the 14 planetary systems but it will not happen
so not to create uh, fear or not to behave pessimistically but you have to be realistic about karma when you are talking of karma you have to understand what i am talking okay so therefore don't think that dusthanas are there zu fly to abroad you know i mean it doesn't work like that <laughs> another very miscon big misconception is uh, if your 12th house is prominent uh, you should settle abroad permanently Okay, I mean this is a part of this only. So I don't know from where this has come. There's some new, new fancy theories in the supermarket of YouTube astrology. You know, twelfth house. Other times people say, ah, especially I have heard this. If you have benefics in twelfth, you should go abroad, and if you have malefics in twelfth, you should not go abroad. Doesn't work like this. <laughs> if if there are planets in twelfth and connected to the third or ninth, they will take you abroad. it is not under your free will to decide can should you go or not all right especially things like location and all these are very big things all right so if you are destined to go abroad you will go abroad and if you are destined not to go abroad then you might stay here i mean permanently you might stay sometimes you may keep going uh, to some other country so don't think that uh, if there is a malefic in the 12 then going to abroad will uh, will be very bad for you don't think like this okay what if you know that benefic is uh, in a good dignity or uh, is ruling good houses what what if then then the moment you go abroad after malefics will give you some challenges after some challenges you will rise like anything in your life so that is a different scenario where the malefics are ruling good houses but blindly to say i have saturn in 12th i'll die if i go abroad Does it work like that? Now I have Jupiter in twelve, so go there also. Let's let's go abroad. Does it work like this? All right. These are all uh, these are all you know some preconceived ideas and notions. So these are some of the uh, big misconceptions, and there are millions of misconceptions about Dustanas. So, and one last thing I have seen is uh, people say if the uh, if a planet is in dusthana and it is in debility it is good and if a planet is in dusthana and it is exalted it is bad no this is also not true the good and bad the ultimate result of what the planet is either either it's good or bad for you will depend on your horoscope okay so for example if you are a very creative person and if you have a um, planet which shows some creativity like mercury venus or the lord of the third or the fifth in a dusthana in debility that's terrible but if that is um, but suppose you 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 are not at all interested in creativity then having these planets in dusthanas in debility can be good for you because then they will not pull you towards creativity okay uh, you may be interested in something else you know like stocks finance or you know like it and all this i mean you may may do some creative work there but you may not go into you know like dance singing painting arts or you know fashion side and all this so then that ability is good for you okay so what happens at the end will depend on where the flow of the horoscope is all right thank you very much for your patience and uh, if you want to watch other videos on the lagna lord i will place it here and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me please go to my website down below exoticastrology.in all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him